today on How It's Made. Fly fishing reels will lure you towards the facts. House paint. No, stay with us. Honestly, it is how it's made, not watch it dry. Weaving looms. We'll spin you a yarn or weave you a tangled web. You decide. And ice makers. Great for sinking drinks and sinking ships too, come to think of it. But first... Fishing reels date back to 12th century China. In the beginning, they were very basic devices, used only for storing extra line. But by the 1800s, craftsmen in Britain and America reinvented the reel when they gave it a drag system for landing feisty fish. These flycasters could hook the big one at any moment, and that's when a precision fishing reel will come in handy. To make a fly fishing reel, they start with a solid aluminium puck. The puck turns on a lathe as a computerised cutter contours it to shape it into a spool. A drill machines a centre hole. The focus then moves to the other side as another tool completes the spool shape. The dimensions must be exact if this fishing reel is to perform flawlessly. They drill holes to both reduce the weight of the spool and provide some ventilation for the wet fishing line. They cut windows into the other side for an attractive look that further lightens the reel. Next, another aluminium puck is transformed into a frame for the spool and other parts. The frame goes into a bath of soapy water and plastic pellets, which rub the part clean. The final touch is a black oxide finish. They now transform this aluminium bar into feet, which will be used to mount the reel to the fishing rod. A laser engraves the company name onto these attachments. It also does a bit of custom engraving on the frame. A worker now inserts a bronze bushing into the centre of the spool and uses hydraulic force to entrench it. He then positions a stainless steel ball on top of the bushing. He activates a press that drives the ball through it to expand the bushing to the correct internal dimension. Another worker applies a counterweight to one side of the spool. This bit of stainless steel will offset the weight of the spool handle. She installs the spool's magnetic locking mechanism. This moulded polymer part has a tiny magnet inside. She applies a second magnet to it, followed by a release button. One final magnet and an aluminium cap, and this assembly is complete. She now installs part of the drag engagement system. It's this system that will create the necessary resistance on the fishing line for battling a big fish. She applies adhesive to screws and then uses them to attach the footing to the real frame. She then resumes the assembly of the drag system by placing a rubber O-ring in the frame's center groove. She installs the thrust bearing ring, which can be rotated by the fly fisher to adjust the drag setting. Now it's time to attach the spool to the fishing reel frame. She turns it to check the drag setting and adjusts it to its starting point. She secures the setting by inserting a pin into the bearing. Then she removes the center locking screw temporarily to assemble the knob base to the thrust bearing.
she reinstalls the screw and covers the assembly with the drag knob. She turns the spool for a final inspection, confirming that this fishing reel operates smoothly. And now it's ready to put a positive spin on any fishing experience. Unless you've got my luck, that is. Latex house paint is water-based, so it has less odour than alkyd oil-based paint. It also cleans up without any harsh solvents. All you need is soap and water. And elbow grease. The paint factory produces an uncoloured base. The store then tints that base to the colour ordered by the customer. Latex paint contains water, latex for adhesion, titanium dioxide, calcium carbonate, potassium, zinc for mildew resistance, and whatever additives the type of paint requires, such as a rust inhibitor if the paint's designed for metal. They pump the water into a large mixing tank. Then they add a thickening agent and stabilizer. This prevents the ingredients from settling to the bottom of the tank and also to the bottom of the can once the paint is packaged. A vacuum duct sucks up the waste. One at a time, all the ingredients except the latex go in. There's a specific mixing time after each ingredient because proper blending is critical for quality. Now they pump the tank's contents into another mixing tank that contains the latex. After four to six hours of blending, the industrial size batch of paint base is finally ready. The factory subjects a sample from every batch to extensive quality control testing. This viscometer measures the thickness of the paint. This test assesses how well the dry ingredients have dispersed within the mix. This tells them whether the mix is blended well enough to move into the second tank containing the latex. Technicians also conduct colour tests, adding recipes of liquid colourants to a gallon sample. This is to ensure the shade comes out exactly the way it's supposed to. To check if the paint covers well, they brush it onto test paper. The stripes provide a contrast so that any defects in the paint, such as foam or grit, will show up. This test evaluates tint strength. Once the paint sample dries, they analyze its color properties with a machine called a spectrophotometer. Once the batch passes inspection, it proceeds to packaging. Latex paint contains about 60% water, which corrodes metal, so the steel cans are lined with an anti-rust coating. The cans run over a glue applicator, and then over a label, which instantly sticks to the adhesive. The next stop is a filling machine. Each can sits on a scale that's positioned under a dispensing nozzle. Once the scale detects the correct net weight, it triggers the nozzle to stop. From the filling machine to a lid dispenser that drops a cover onto each can. Then it's onto what's called a lid press, which you'll never guess presses the lids onto the cans. The next machine, called a baler, attaches a curved handle made of steel wire. It locks 
fits the handle ends into metal discs on both sides of the can. This paint is now ready to add a little colour to your life. Unless you choose white, that is. Coming up, weaving looms. Go on, give in to your warped desires. And ice makers, cooler than a fridge full of Fonzies. See you after the break. La ora 20, un bărbat și o femeie în sălbăticie. Iar de la 21, Ber predă tehnici esențiale de supraviețuire. În exclusivitate, totul despre cel mai controversat site internet la 22, Wikileaks.